I think you guys are poised to watch God move in power on Saturday night. And I love that the, the explicit intention here tonight is to sing and to pray and to believe God for, for victory, to believe God for uh, a mighty work and to really prepare our hearts. I was thinking about Joshua chapter 3 when the children of Israel were about to finally go over the Jordan River into the promised land. That's a big deal, right? They've been waiting for a hot minute to do so. Throughout all the hundreds of years in Egypt and the 40 years of wandering and you know, they, they had to swap out leaders because Moses couldn't go in. You got to get your temper under control, ladies and gentlemen. And Joshua gets them ready. But before they go in, God says, tell the people to sanctify themselves because the Lord wants to do mighty works among you tomorrow. Sancti sanctify yourself today so that, so that you're prepared for God to use you tomorrow. And I, I think that's kind of the heartbeat here to not rush into this amazing outreach. And honestly, it is an amazing outreach that you guys are as a church community and a, and a united church linked up together, believing God for this, this, this amazing uh, outreach. It's, it's fantastic, the fireworks and the music and, and the message and the whole deal. Uh, but to say, hey, we're gonna not rush into this without taking some time to set our hearts apart for God, to fill us afresh with his spirit and to pray and believe and, and to believe God for Pastor Skip to have just the right words to speak, that he might open his mouth boldly and make known the mystery of the gospel, and to believe God for the musicians and the team and every single person serving in the car park and every detail and believing for the weather to be just right and all the things and every person getting invited that are seeing a billboard or hearing a radio ad would just be, uh, you know, guided along by the Holy Spirit. And so that's the, the heart tonight. And, and so I love that you guys are taking some time before the battle to really bow down before the Lord and, and get ready. And it's an honor that I would get to be a part of this moment with you. It's so special and tender. And I love seeing the youth rushing the stage. Don't ever lose that kind of energy. Don't ever lose that kind of act of fool, crazy spirit. I'll get all emotional. I'm a son of the house. I, 30 years ago, at the age of 13, made a decision for Christ at a Calvary of Albuquerque summer camp. And uh, my life's never been the same. And everything God's done in my life, everything he's done, every book and the church and anything God's ever done through us, of course, is his Holy Spirit working. But I can point back to moments and, and a lot of them that took place here at this building and in this campus. And because of your pastoral leadership, Pastor Skip and Linya, and thank you so much for that and honor you. and. Uh, I'm gonna dance with the one who brought me. You see what I'm saying? And I'm just, I'm always gonna be grateful for that and your leadership and, and dad, uh, you, you're just a mighty man of God and so grateful for your friendship and to be here with you and believe in for just total healing and this fight with cancer you're in and just grateful for God just having this and us being able to say, hey, we're gonna send the worship out in front and we're, we're not gonna fret and freak. We're gonna do all the right and wise things. We're gonna trust God for what only he can do. And then we're gonna do everything we can do, right? It's not either or. It's not like, oh, I pray for purity, and then I'm alone with my girlfriend all the time, right? We gotta, we gotta pray for what God only can do, and then we gotta do everything we can do, right? So we're not like, God, save the city of Albuquerque on Saturday night, and then we don't, you know, go out and invite people, right? Jesus said you gotta be cunning like serpents and harmless as doves. Doves are this picture of being a worship, like a, a worship response. Doves aren't sneaky. We went to the zoo today, I didn't see like the, the doves have like triple barbed wire around them. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, watch out the doves, they could get out. But the tiger, yeah, the tiger, different thing, all right? The snake exhibit, I, I just say, get thee behind me snake exhibit. I'm not about that. I'm not about that energy. But my son was excited. King Cobra, I'm like, dude, that's the wrong team. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't be excited about that. We would get excited about the lions, but y'all lost your lions to Texas. I'm sorry. I don't know what that's all about. It's not right. I say you go get them back. Go free willy that situation in the night, right? All right, I'm, I know I'm just rambling now, but, but we, gotta, we gotta do what we can do and pray God will do what he does. And I just wanted to just take a few moments and, um, and really just encourage you before you do in, in just a minute what, what it is that, that God really does intend for you to do, and that is to, to intercede, to put yourself in the gap uh, like Moses did, to say, God, uh, I'd rather have you blot me out of your book than your people. And I think God wants to see that reaction in the heart of his people. So I'm just going to take just a few moments and, and just really get your heart 
um, prepared. I know that English has limitations. The language English has some limitations. That's why we need to know the Greek, right? Like we say, I love ice cream. I love sushi. Love the isotopes. I hope you don't love your mom's sushi and the isotopes all the same, right? And so Greek helps us know there's different words for, for love, right? So we can understand the nuance. Well, Hebrew does the same thing. The, the nation, uh, the, the, the language of, of the, the Jewish people, the Hebrew language. We, we read in our Bible praise, right? We were just praising God. We're going to praise God again. But there's not just one word for praise in Scripture. There's actually seven. And my friend Chris Tomlin was the one who first pointed this out to me. That there's seven different words for praise. And it would be like having only one put putter instead of having a driver and a wedge and a, all the different clubs that you need to go golfing. Um, and so when you understand and have your eyes open to the different kinds of praise that exist, it helps you to understand how to more appropriately use the right tool for the right job. And I just wanted to really quickly fly through, and this will only take two minutes, but let me just really quickly fly, fly through the seven different Hebrew words for praise so you can understand some of the different tools at your disposal so you don't end up like the guy who only had a, t a hammer in his toolbox and so everything he treated like it was a nail. But you need duct tape. You need super glue. You need a pair of pliers, some, somebody, right? You need a leatherman. You can't just have a hammer. And, and sometimes we just treat worship like it's just, well, just praise. Well, it's a lot more sophisticated than that. And I spent seven weeks on this, so I won't, I won't even attempt to try and get it into two minutes. But let me just fly through them. The first Hebrew word for praise is halal. Halal indicates foolish, crazy, frenzied behavior. That's that's a maverick city, I thank God, kind of spirit, right? It's like that. It's like act a fool. It's, it's what happened when the prodigal son came home. There was a sound of music and dancing. Everybody was acting crazy because that's how we act at weddings. That's how we act at birthday parties. And when someone was dead but comes back to life, shoot. Shoot, right? We worship God from head to toe when we remember that we were headed to hell, but he saved us. If we're doing it right, I hope you haven't been saved so long you've forgotten how awesome it is and what it costs God. And we get stupid on TikTok, but then we show up in church and it's just all, we're just going to just stand there with our khakis all pleated and, and act like everything's fine, right? Halal is when you're willing to be foolish for God, like David did. The second word is yada. Everyone say yada. Yada is where you worship God with your hands extended, which is the natural posture when you're excited about something. When we see our team win that goal, we just... The third is tauda. So someone say tauda. Same ending as yada, and so you're thinking there's probably a similarity, and there is. Tauda in, 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 involves the hands being raised, but it's now with confession on your heart. We raise up our hands to say, God, I'm so sorry I did that. And I know you can't flow your power through me when I'm, I'm a dirty vessel, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to confess. I'm going to confess my sins so you're faithful to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. The third is tauda. It's powerful. Don't forget it. Don't neglect it when you're, when you're worshiping God. Praise him with the tauda praise. The fourth is, I'm going to have to help you understand this is different than the word you, you're going to think I'm going to say. The third is, or the fourth is tehillah. Y'all haven't been saved that long, have you? He, dun, 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 tehillah. All right, it's like, yo, hey, hey, got some Jose Cuervo energy on that one, right? Tehillah is a hymn of praise. And what's so beautiful about a hymn is that when you hear a hymn song, usually there's a choir involved. And so we can't tehillah by ourselves. We tehillah together. We give God hymns and songs that are new songs he wants to be sung with. And Psalm 22 says, you are enthroned in the tehillahs of your people. So when we together come together in Jesus' name, lifting up these songs, something happens. God pulls a chair up. Amen? God pulls a chair up and comes near in a unique way. The fifth is, and I'm going to give you a chance to try these all out. It's going to be like top golf up in here. You're going to be able to grab whatever club you want and just go crazy in a second. Now you're going to understand. Your eyes are open to see the different tools. The, the, the fifth is Zamar. Someone say Zamar. Zamar is where we get down to the strings. God wants to be worshipped on the strings. We get down to the cymbals. God wants to be worshipped with the drums. We get down to, we get down to the keys. There's, do you hear it? There's the music that provides a chariot for our praises to ride on the way to God's presence. There's something about the music. This, this team worked hard. They prepared. They, they learned their scales. They played maybe till their fingers were bleeding at one point in their lives. They did so to skillfully serve us as we bring our praises to God. But don't you dare walk out of here and 
pretend like it's American Idol and you're grading the worship team on their performance. They're just here to help you bring God a sacrifice of praise. The day that you walk out of church and you're starting to like grade Pastor Skip's message, I give it an 82, right? The worship was okay. We should not be walking out of church asking, did I like it? We should be walking out of church going, did you? Did you? Did, did he like it? Did he like the way I listened to that word? Did he like the way I responded to that? Did he like the way I planned to go be a doer not a hear? Did he like the way I sang enthusiastically? Or was I so busy? Was I so up in myself that I was for, preoccupied with what other people thought about me that I neglected to think, what did you think about my praise? Zamar. Number six is Barak. Barak is the most common word for worship used. It's 111 times or so in scripture. It is Psalm 34, I will Barak the Lord's name at all times. His praises will ever be in my mouth. It's, it's always, when it's used in scripture, a picture of kneeling. There's a sense in which we kneel in praise. It's reverence, it's humility, it's I bow low because God opposes the proud but gives grace to the Barak. I am here, you are there. I am on earth, you are God in heaven. I'm gonna let my words be few. I'm gonna let there be a sense of a posture of humility that guides my praise, whether just in my heart but, or in my body as well. I don't know if I could ever get on my knees during singing. Yeah, that's because you don't like outward shows of enthusiasm because that's probably all fake-like. You know, Martin Lloyd-Jones once said, a dislike of enthusiasm is one of the greatest hindrances to revival that exists. Because we're going to be all serious and stuffy. Instead of realizing God saved me with the blood of his son, I'm willing to act a fool. I don't care. I don't care what it costs me. I don't care what you think about me. You didn't die to save me. He did. So I'm willing to bow low. I'm willing to barack. And then lastly, and we're done. In fact, why don't you stand up as we get close to the end here, because that'll make me shut up. The last word for worship is Shabbat. Someone say Shabbat. Now you got to say like you got a little popcorn stuck in the back of your throat. Shabbat. Shabbat is a command of triumph or a shout of praise. Psalm 47.1 says, clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. I'm telling you, there's something intuitively that comes out of you when you're really excited, when you catch that big fish, when you net that big sail, when you get, when you, when that girl says, yes, she'll marry you. There's just almost a sense which, which the only appropriate thing to do is to shout with triumph. It's a holy roar. Come on, shout. 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 Come on let's shout like we believe it's already done because we don't fight for victory, we fight from victory. And when Jesus said it is finished, he meant it for real, forever. Come on, shame must die, anxiety must die, depression must die. Come on, Jesus is king forever. We hope you enjoyed this special service from Calvary Church. We'd love to know how this message impacted you. Email us at mystory@calvarynm.church. And just a reminder, you can support this ministry with a financial gift at calvarynm.church/give. Thank you for joining us for this teaching from Calvary Church.